Tiku who emerged as the presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, in May had on Thursday, June 16, 2022, picked Okobar as his running mate for the 2023 general elections. He said the governor is his ideal VP candidate saying he has the quality to unite Nigeria. But the leaders of the Southern and Middle Belt Leaders Forum, Ohanis and Bigbo and Afenifia, a socio-cultural organization for the Yorubas have criticized Okoba for accepting to run with Atiku. In a statement jointly signed by the group's leaders, the groups describe Okoba as a traitor, saying he should not have accepted Atiku's offer. Recalling the agreement by Southern governors that the presidency should be zoned to their region, the group said it, unspeakable and quite disappointing, that Okoba accepted the vice presidency nomination from Atiku, who is a northerner. The statement titled Atiku's VP nomination, You are a traitor, Southern, Middle Belt leaders Barek Governor Okoba was signed by Edwin Clark, Ayo Adibanjo and George Obayosa, the President General, Ohani Zandigbo Worldwide. Read the full statement below. Atiku's VP nomination, You are a traitor, Southern, Middle Belt leaders Barek Governor OKOWA statement by Southern and Middle Belt leaders forum, SNBLF, the 17th of June 2022. The Southern and Middle Belt Leaders Forum, SNBLF, has berated the Governor of Delta State, Senator Dr. Ifani Okoba for accepting his nomination as Vice Presidential Candidate to Alhaji Atiku Abubakar, Presidential Candidate of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, in the forthcoming 2023 general elections. It is unspeakable and quite disappointing that Governor Ifani Okoba, who is currently Chairman of the South-South Governors Forum, and a native of Oralero in Ica Northeast Local Government Area, one of the Igbo-speaking areas of Delta State, would exhibit such barefaced unreliability. It bears recalling that the 17 governors of the southern states of Nigeria, both of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, and the All Progressives Congress, APC, under the chairmanship of the governor of Ondo State, Rotimi Akeridolu, San, met in Asaba, the capital of Delta State on May 11, 2021, and took far-reaching decisions, including that, based on the principles of fairness, equity and justice, the presidency should rotate to the south at the end of the statutory eight years of President Muhammadu Buhari's tenure. And this very Governor Okoba was the host of that historic meeting. The Southern Governors later met again in Lagos on July 5th, where they reaffirmed their decision, and again in Enugu on September 16th, to restate the call that the presidency should rotate to the South in 2023. It is essential to underline that the Southern and Middle Belt Leaders Forum, SNBLF, applauded the meeting of the Governors, given its significant representation and the gravity of the outcome. We followed up and issued a similar statement after our meeting in Abuja on the 30th of May 2021, asking that the presidency should rotate to the south. And went further, on several other occasions, to caution political stakeholders from the south, including serving and former governors, ministers, senators, etc., not to, on any account, allow themselves to be appointed or nominated as running mate to any presidential candidate, if the presidency is not zoned to the south and that we will work against such person or persons. It is, therefore, most unfortunate that the governor of Delta State, Senator Ifani Okoba who should know better, accepted his appointment as running mate to Alhaji Atiku Abubakar. We do not have anything personal against Ifani Okoba but his action is treacherous and tantamount to a despicable pawning of the political future of the people of southern Nigeria. Sadly, it is also now common knowledge that he spent resources belonging to the government and people of Delta State to lobby for the position extensively. And that explains why he never made any statement when his party, the People's Democratic Party, PDP, thoughtlessly jettisoned the zoning principle, which has become established as a norm and an intrinsic part of the political trajectory. It is difficult to fathom how a political party can claim to be on a supposed rescue mission, with such false footings of unfairness, injustice, duplicity and gross insensitivity to national outlook. It is regrettable that while most of Governor Okoa's southern and northern counterparts have maintained gallant, patriotic deference to the unity and peace of the country, above blinkered political considerations, by their resolute stance on the rotation of the presidency to the south in 2023, Governor Ifani Okiva, the chairman of the South-South Governors Forum, of all people, would gullibly and slavishly capitulate to the bonbon of absurdity. Thus, exceeding to a Situation whereby, one person rules for eight years and hands over to another of his stock, in a country of at least 360 ethnic groups. What a shame, the people of southern Nigeria chimed at Asaba, Lagos, Enugu, Oyo, Port Harcourt, Omohia, and Abuja, continuously on the zoning of the presidency and that another northern presidency after the eight years of President Muhammadu Buhari would be injurious to the unity and peace of the country. Governor Okoba has, by his action, betrayed the trust reposed on him by his colleagues, the southern governors, the entire good people of southern Nigeria and all well-meaning Nigerians. He has made himself persona non grata, not only, with SNBLF but all citizens who treasure our oneness and hopes of a more united and peaceful Nigeria.
We, therefore, reject Governor Ifani Okover and his vice presidency, and leave him to his lot, but let the world know that this is a betrayal of the highest order. And that this is not a matter of loyalty to one's political party, but rather a greedy, parochial and unpatriotic action, committed against the general interest of his state, Delta State, the Niger Delta region, and southern Nigeria. It is, certainly, also not in the interest of the nation at large. We commend the patriotism of all Nigerians who cherish our unity and progress as a country and further urge all such Nigerians, in the north and the south, young and mature, the high and mighty, irrespective of religion and tribe, to remain steadfast on the centrality of the presidency to rotating to the south in 2023, in the national interest. I have come here today to ask Oranese Ndigo questions about Igbo presidency 2023. And at the same time, I would like to teach you Fulani politics. I know you don't know Fulani, neither do you know Fulani politics, but I will teach you that politics today. On Anes Ndigo, you said it is the turn of Ndigo to be president come 2023. You said they should zone the presidency to the southeast. You said for peace, fairness, and equity, an Igbo man should be the president of Nigeria. The truth remains, it is actually the turn of Ndigo to produce president. The best of the earth can attest to that fact. But our Ahanez and Ibo, as it is now, the flag bearer of APC is Ahmed Tinibu from Yoruba. The flag bearer of PDP is Atiku Abubakar. Follow me. There is no space for Ndibu. What will happen next? You say if they don't give an Igbo man president, failing to give an Igbo man president, you will accept your fate that you are not part of Nigeria. And you hope on PDP and APC, knowing fully well that these are the two major political parties in Nigeria that produces Nigeria president. And you have high hope and expectation that either PDP or APC will make an Igbo man their flag bearer. Now, the reverse is the case. Ahmed Tinubu is the flag bearer of APC. Atiku Abubakar is the flag bearer of PDP. What next? What is your next move? What is your next strategy? What will happen next? What is the hope of Ndibu? Now they have disgraced the good people. People do know that they will not give Igbo man president. That was why people ran away. That was why people ran away to level party. Instead of full army to give an Igbo man president, they will go to the zoo and bring the babu and crown that babu the president of Nigeria. That is full army. Instead of full army to give Igbo man, people do know that they will not give him president. He ran away and went to level party. Now, what is the hope of Ndibo? Honest Ndibo, Fulani made you to believe that self-determination is a crime. Self-determination has never been a crime and will not be a crime. After going to beg Yerima Shetima, after going to beg Fulani to allow an Igbo man to be the president, this is your report card. After going to present your candidate, your credible candidate from the southeast, Rocha Sokorocha, Obonayono, David Omahe, Emeka Wajoba, Ono Pitobi. Pitobi is not in the list because he's no longer in uh, APC or PDP. He is a Labour Party. After presenting all the candidates in the southeast, this is the result. Rocha Sokorocha got zero votes in the APC primary. After speaking all the languages in the world, Rocha Sokorocha even spoke of from Fude. Fulani, he spoke all the languages. Oh, when my own got only one vote. David Omahi, the engineer, he said he's an engineer, he will engineer Nigeria. David Omahi got 38 votes. David Omahi said, Poto Poto, after serving the Fulani. After David Omahi served the Fulani, this is what they serve him back. This is the breakfast the Fulani gave David Omahi. Only 38 votes. A man that accepted Fulani people. A man that embraced Fulani and loved the Fulani, they gave him 38 votes. Engineer inside the potter potter. And make a juba one vote at the end of the day on an Ezendibo after going to beg Yerima Shetima and beg Fulani to allow an Igbo man to be the president. Igbo people only got 40 votes from APC. Only 40. This is the highest shame and disgrace of Ndibo. Only 40. You are playing politics. This same Igbo presidency is the reason why Fulani asks you to proscribe IPOP as terrorist organization. You did not waste time. You proscribe IPOP as terrorists. You should know that the Southeastern governors have failed their people. This is the disgrace they gave you. 40 votes. All the candidates, Rocha has got to zero. Nobody even voted for him. After serving the zoo, after serving Fulani, after
after serving four and me, this is what they serve you back. Oh, and as in you, what is now your fate? What will happen next? The same evil presidency is the reason why Fulani told Hope also them. Fulani brought a strike, bombed all. Hope also them accepted them. Why did they go to Ono? Because of ESN. The duty of ESN is to protect our mothers that Fulani, that Fulani people are raping inside the farm. But Hope also them brought in a strike. And started bombing all over because of this same evil presidency, because of this disgrace. See your disgrace. This is your report card. Evil presidency inside Poto Poto. They be the one, the engineer inside Poto Poto. Okora Awosa, Okora Ocha that is speaking from food inside Poto Poto. Serve the Fulani and come back in shame. You say you want to be sweeping their company, you want to be washing their plates. See your results. How far about the evil president? Evil presidency. Does not believe you instead of them to give you president, they will go and bring monkey and crown that monkey the president of Nigeria. You destroyed your people just to gain full and favor. What are they doing to you today? Full and protected their people, protect his men, protect Boko Boko that have killed millions of people, send them abroad for rehabilitation. But the same full and that protect their people called you to prescribe your own. You do not hesitate to prescribe your own, all because of evil presidency. See your results. See your report card. Very shameful. So disgraceful. What is now your fate? Now let me teach you full any politics. If you think that because APC have brought out Tinubu, that the Tinubu will win article, that means you don't know politics. You are not a good student of politics. You are a novice when it comes to politics. They are playing a smart game. That is why APC voted for PDP to do their primaries. As soon as they declared Atiku as the flag bearer of PDP, they went and do their meeting, restrategize. Say, let us get a Sultana, not an evil man. Let's get a Yoruba man. So that we will present it. You think APC and PDP will bring in two Northerners? So that they will split their vote in the North, right? You are a novice, you are not a good student of politics. They made a smooth open door for Atiku to win. They made it very, very easy for Article to win 2023 presidency, except you people have another plan. But they made it very easy for Article Abubakar to win presidency. Full and have plan. Is it not the same Article that represented Buhari when Buhari's son was doing his wedding? That is to tell you how united Full and people are. They are very united. You call them novices. You said they are wanderers, that they are illiterate, they wander in the bush. But they have sense more than all of you evil people that are professors. See how they play politics on you. See how they are very smart and intelligent. See what they give you. See the results they give you. They are very smart when it comes to politics. They gather their people. They are very united. All of you are scatter scatter. You destroy your people. They tell you to destroy your people. You destroy. They tell you to bomb your people. You, you bomb. Now you are a slave. You are begging. Hope of them say, I hope one day they will give us opportunity. You were a slave. You told you go to a slave. Nenu. Nenu. Nenu report card. Disgrace. Cheap. See what you got, only 40 votes. After serving full and after serving the full and people, this is what they gave you. What is now the fate of Ndibo in politics? What is your fate and what is your hope? If you think that full and don't know what they are doing, that means you don't have sense. They have made it very easy for Atiku Abubakar to win that president. Very easy for him. Even if a Mahusa man is in another party. And his uh, second brother is in another party. Instead of them to vote for a Santana or an Istana, they will go and vote for their brother that is in a party they don't recognize. That is how united they are. When it comes to unity, they are very smart and intelligent. But you don't know politics. People that are illiterate know politics more than you Santanas. You don't know politics. You are a novice as an evil man when it comes to politics. You are a novice. You are a toddler. You are a toddler in politics. They protect the people that are killing in the farm. Protect the Boko Boko. And your own people that are asking for self-determination. Has self-determination been a crime before? Self-determination will never, has never, and will not be a crime. But they tell you to kill your people for asking for freedom, for asking for their freedom. Now they have disgraced all of you. Oh, and I want to ask you again. What will be your faith and hope? What will be your faith and hope? Now, you know, full people have disgraced you like this. 
Now they have disgraced you, disgraced our nation, Ndibo. After begging, after desecrating the cup of Ndibo, after prostrating, after the, uh, prescribing IPOP as terrorists, after bombing ESN, after destroying our mother's crops, after going to side the Fulani, they have disgraced you. APC and PDP removed the flag bearer from the southeast after much begging and gave it to the north and to the west, Yoruba and Hausa. What will be the fate of Ndibu? What will happen? What is your next strategy? 